What can this, this and this tell us about Germany's relationship with the environment? Overall, Germany has a pretty green reputation. We certainly know the Germans love nature, but how much do they really do to protect it? Ich achte auf meinen Müll so ungefähr. Was irgendwie zu recyceln geht, kommt in die entsprechenden Tonnen. Neben dem Müll trennen, was glaube ich jeder hier macht, habe ich kein Auto. Also ich fahre halt alles mit dem Fahrrad, gucke, dass ich so Bio einkaufe und regional vor allen Dingen und saisonal. Ob ich jetzt einen neuen Kühlschrank anschaffe, der schlichtweg weniger verbraucht. Ich bin auf hauptsächlich vegane Ernährung umgestiegen. Auch wenig Plastikverpackungen äh, zu kaufen. Zum Beispiel, wenn ich mir einen Kaffee to go hole, mir halt, ähm, dass ich das auf den Deckel verzichte. Das sind so Kleinigkeiten, ja. über die ich mir aber lange Zeit keine Gedanken gemacht habe. Jetzt aber so klick, klick, klick mache. First up, an area of great national importance, recycling. This is often a source of wonder or even bewilderment for newcomers. There's the deposit system for bottles, the color-coded neighborhood glass containers, and the home recycling bins. The rules on what goes where can be quite complicated and vary between cities. Germans take their trash separation very seriously and they'll be quick to correct any neighbours not pulling their weight. And yet, somehow, things are still going awry. Around half of the items that land in this yellow bin are reportedly not supposed to be there. An estimated two-thirds of the rubbish that lands in the household waste could have been recycled. In the end, despite all that trash separation, more than half of Germany's rubbish still gets burned. Of course, what would be better than recycling all that waste is creating less of it in the first place. And Germany is one of the biggest producers of trash per person in the EU. Germany has signed up to the Paris Agreement, an international commitment to limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. In 2020, Germany actually met its carbon reduction targets, but that had a lot to do with reduced energy demand during the pandemic. So when the country's up and running as usual, where does it get its energy from? In 2019, the breakdown of energy sources for electricity production was as follows. Nearly 30% coal, 15% gas, 12% nuclear, and more than 40% renewables, half of which came from wind. But of course, that's only electricity. Once other things like heating and transport are taken into account, the renewable percentage drops down to under 20%, and the country's continued reliance on fossil fuels comes back into focus. Germany has a long history with coal, as you can easily see in former mining hubs, like here in the Ruhr area. It played a huge part in Germany's industrial growth, and both domestic and imported coal continued to be an important energy source for decades. But in recent years, public sentiment has turned against this fuel because of its high carbon emissions and the destruction caused to the natural landscape by the mining process. One high-profile example centered around the ancient Hambach forest, which had already been depleted to around an eighth of its original size and was facing further threat from coal extraction. What do you do if you want to save a forest? Build a treehouse and move in. That's what some activists did. And in 2018, tens of thousands of protesters occupied the forest. And they won. The German government has now protected what remains of Hambach Forest. Now the plan is to phase out coal completely by 2038. But what will take its place? Some industrial nations are looking to nuclear power to plug the gap on their way to reaching carbon reduction targets. But after Japan's nuclear disaster of 2011, German politicians decided to end nuclear power production in Germany by 2022. Instead, Germany is leaning more towards a different stopgap solution, natural gas. But it doesn't have that much of its own. And that's where controversial plans for a gas pipeline running all the way from Russia to Germany come in. Longer term, Germany's Energiewende, or Energy Transition Plan, involves a switch to renewable energy sources, including wind, solar and hydro. But in order to meet targets of 65% of electricity coming from renewable energy sources by 2030, the country's grid desperately needs a makeover. There has also been criticism that it's the consumers who are the ones paying the price for the switch over to renewables. Electricity in Germany is actually among the most expensive worldwide. Die ganze Energiewende ist überhaupt nicht vernünftig durchdacht gewesen. Diese teuren Spritpreise und diese Stromtarif und alles. Wird nur der meistens der kleine Mann wird davon in Mitleidenschaft gezogen. Ne? Es ist Unsinn, alle Atomkraftwerke abzustellen, den Strom, den Atomstrom dann aus Frankreich zuzukaufen. Mit der ganzen Lobby, mit dem mit dem Kohleausstieg und so, das dauert mir auf jeden Fall alles zu lange. Sehr schleppend, wie alles, was mit irgendwie Innovation in diesem Land zu tun hat. Man möchte ja keinem auf die Füße treten, Arbeitsplätze, die in gewissen Industrien bedroht sind. Letzten Endes wird es, ist es ein Thema, das irgendjemandem wehtun muss. Fridays for Future ist seit zwei Jahren am Kämpfen und die machen so viel. Before the coronavirus came along, almost a third of all German students had taken part in a school strike organized by the Fridays for Future movement. 
So is the momentum on climate action in Germany coming from the younger generations? Für mich war das ganz lange so ein, einfach so ein ganz unwohles Gefühl, wenn ich über diese Themen nachgedacht habe. Und irgendwann kam aber dieser Moment, wo ich dachte, okay, ich glaube, die Erwachsenen, die Regierungen, die großen Konzerne, die Leute, die Entscheidungen treffen, die checken nicht, was abgeht. Und wir müssen was tun, um sie dazu zu zwingen, darüber zu reden, um dann eben auch zu handeln. Wir sind ein reiches Land, wir sind ein wohlhabendes Land und wir können uns ganz schön viel hier leisten. Und die Kosten davon, die sieht man aber zuerst in anderen Teilen der Welt oder eben in der Zukunft. Also so zum Beispiel meine Generation wird das treffen. Wie war deine erste Demo für dich? Ich weiß noch, dass ich ganz am Anfang total nervös war, weil man denkt ja nicht, wir gründen jetzt die größte Jugendbewegung, die es seit Jahrzehnten gab, sondern man denkt sich, scheiße, kann ich gerade wirklich einfach nicht zum Französisch? Unterricht gehen. Am Ende hat sich dann aber herausgestellt, das war halt genau das Richtige, weil hätten wir das nicht gemacht, hätte niemand angefangen, wirklich über die Klimakrise zu reden und wir haben es dadurch geschafft, dass Klima das eine Thema ist, worum in Deutschland gerade niemand mehr drum rumkommt. One other thing Germany is going to have to deal with before it can get that green badge of honor is its car habit. Car density actually rose 12% from 2010 to 2019 in Germany. Germany's automobile industry makes a lot of money. It employs hundreds of thousands of workers and has a very powerful political lobby. The 2015 Dieselgate scandal, in which German car maker VW was found to have cheated on emissions tests, has put more pressure on car companies to clean their act up. Despite being very slow to catch on to the need for electrical innovation, German companies are now projected to produce the most electric cars in the world in 2021. The next step will be to urgently improve the infrastructure for these electric vehicles across the country. And of course, in order to wean more Germans off their beloved cars, there needs to be a better alternative in the form of affordable, reliable public transport and bike-friendly infrastructure. While some cities are already leading the way, there's a lot more to be done nationwide. So what do you reckon? Are the Germans as green as you expected? <laughs>